Welcome to another week of Turnpike Sports. I am Dave Weishattle, and as always, I am joined by my co-host and producer, Doug Weishattle. Doug, what's up? Well, let's see. We have the final starting tonight in the NBA. We have the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs all Which tied up 1-1. <laughs> Which is that, really good already. You know, there's nothing like playoff hockey. Oh, absolutely. And we also have the finals of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Oh, yeah. Is tonight. Yeah. Now, uh, for a little uh, background, you were in a National Spelling Bee. Was it Scripps Spelling Bee? It was Scripps, yes. Yeah. So uh, you were up on stage and it, with I, all I, that I, pressure. I was in the regionals, yes. You were in the regionals. Yes. And, and, I, and I know this scarred you for life because uh, tell me which word you crapped out on. Vagrancy. Do you know how to spell it now? Spell it. I, I will always spell it correctly now. V-A-G-R-A-N-C-Y. There you go. But, you know, it, it's one of those things. That, you know, people make fun of the spelling bees. I, I think it's a lot of pressure on these kids. The, I mean, the kids you know. take it seriously. The kids take it seriously. And it, it is a lot of work and preparation. And when you're up there, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. It, it, it's different than when you're watching it on TV. It looks simple when you're on TV. But th- there's an audience there looking at you well, while you're doing and, that. And also, some of these words, I, first off, I don't know how to spell them because I've never heard of some of those before. So I don't, you know, it's amazing that these kids do this. Thing. Well, that, that's I don't the, even know how you prepare for something like this. You, you're you're drilled. You're given lists of words. You're wow. given uh, definitions. You're given, uh, you got thesauruses. You got uh, uh, dictionaries, all that stuff. And the one thing that was different when I was doing it compared to now, the words are two totally different things. I mean, you've got multisyllabic words being used with these kids, and here I am losing on vagrancy. Yep. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I can't even spell multisyllabic, so uh, there's a word I can't do. But, uh, hey, it's been a busy week. It's, uh, like I said, the uh, finals and two sports are here and some weird stuff happening in the NBA. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get to it. Uh, let's take a ride on the turnpike. Exit 1. Well, like we just alluded to, the NBA Finals are upon us once again, and fourth time in a row. You know, it, it's like so much for parody, huh? It, it's it's almost like watching a bad movie series. It's Mavericks, uh, no, it's uh, Cavaliers and Warriors Part Four. Yeah, yeah. Only time this has ever happened in well, any look, sport. Uh, four uh, times in a row, same teams. That they're the same teams, but they're some of the biggest names in the sport. So you know, there's that. You know, you 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 want to see LeBron in uh, the playoffs. You want to see uh, you know, you know Curry in the playoffs. So this is what everyone wants, and you know, this is big name stars playing. Well, the one twist this this year is for the Warriors: no Iguodala in Game One, and Iguodala is their biggest defender against LeBron James. What's so, the latest on him? I know he's he, out. For the finals. game one, just game one, just game, just one. game one. Okay, he's got a leg contusion or something, and 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 then you had LeBron over there. I think it was yesterday or the day before, saying that if the Sixers had not drafted Iguodala, they were going to get him. Okay, so it's it's weird, and the Warriors are the largest favorites for this series. Oh, you mean the fifteen they're, years? They're, they're the biggest. Uh, I guess Cleveland's the biggest underdogs, huh? If you want to say it that way, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going because you know why? I would think. The smart money would be on Cleveland because if the uh, if the last uh, series told you something, I don't think there's that huge of an underdog in these playoffs. So uh, you know both both series went to Game Seven. See, I, I, I think this I can't one's going to go that. pretty I, far. I, I honestly, the way Cleveland plays away from home, it's just really odd. Yeah, you know, the Warriors turn it on. They in smacked the third around quarter, Boston. Anyway. They smacked around. Yeah, Boston. but it took them seven games to do it. Well, yeah, yeah it's one of those things where you know there was it eleven hundred was the money line one thousand one hundred or something something like that for the yeah. for the Warriors. Warriors are favored minus yeah. one thousand. I have, the, and the, that may change. Well, was, hey, the, the, because like I said, I think the money's going to go in Cleveland. I, honestly, it all depends on what they do in Game One because LeBron James supposedly has trouble in Game Ones all through this postseason. They've lost them. Hmm. They haven't won a Game One. And yeah. he's and he's had really bad games in game one, but you know it, it'll be interesting to watch, especially with Kevin Love out with still concussion syndromes uh, sim- symptoms. So, you know, we we don't know who's going to be playing. We don't even know the full cast yet. We got one missing from the Warriors and one missing from the uh, uh, Cavaliers. So we'll see what happens with that. Well, and one thing too, uh, you got to remember that the kind of Rockets gave it to him in that game seven because I think they missed twenty seven. Uh, three pointers, which is weird, which is really I've, odd. I've actually never seen 
a team missed twenty seven three points. Well, and actually, the NBA has never seen. Yeah, that. I don't that, think so. that's I think it's a historical record, market. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, it, you know, it'll it'll be interesting. I I don't. I, I re- if if Cleveland somehow wins this series, you can't not say LeBron James is probably the best of all times. Well, well, I don't I don't know. He, he's basically willing this team. Oh, in, yeah. into the he, finals. He, he took this team on its back on his back and you know just ran with it. He Good took two teams because they rebuilt at the All Star break. Oh, they, uh, the All Star break man, when they it dismantled everything. I thought they were just giving up on the season, but uh, no. shame on me for thinking that. Exit two. We're going to shift a little gears here, get away from professional sports, and go to the WWE. How dare you not call them professional sports? When when the wrestlers <laughs> How get dare you? when the wrestlers get SAG cards, I cannot call this a sport. I'll call them athletes. I gotta, I gotta I'll you, call I, them athletes because I love they this do. Deal. I love this. Deal. Fox Sports entered into a deal with the WWE just recently, and the deal is worth one billion dollars. They're going to be airing WWE SmackDown, which is their most popular show, Friday nights. They were talking about expanding it to three hours, but they're going to stick with the two-hour format. If, for most people who don't watch wrestling, this SmackDown is their biggest show. It was on it, when they had the deal with NBC. This was the show they promoted all the time on the on the cable channels because they were on USA, they were on Sci Fi for a while. NBC never seemed to find a home for them, to be honest with you. So when the NBC deal ended, Fox Sports stepped up. And they did the five-year deal, which was interesting because when they got the deal with wrestling, they dropped UFC. Yeah, I I, I thought that was kind of weird. I thought they could uh, coexist both. together because Fox has a lot of channels. Uh, they have a lot of TV channels, Fox FS1, Fox this, Fox that. You know, you would think they'd find a place for them. But, hey, you know, it's uh, I, I think if you're paying $1 billion for – and entity, I think you have to cut in other places, I would think. Well, ESPN actually got a good deal with the UFC. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's another five-year deal. This one's worth $1.5 billion. So. They're, they're going to be showing the major fights on ESPN, and then they're going to be streaming 20 other fights on ESPN+, Plus, which is their new streaming service, which I think is a brilliant move because I think that streaming service needs a lot more uh, people using it. It's, it's getting traction, too, but... I think this actually this deal will actually give it some uh, better uh, image in the uh, uh, public side. I, I think UFC is really going to grow bigger this year. I think there's more places that they're going to live. I know Atlantic City is bringing it back, and uh, well, Atlantic City, ESPN, Atlantic it, City is doing. Uh, a, they just did a deal with another minor league kind of MMA. It's a, out of New Jersey. It's some kind of real action fighting or sure. something like that. So, But yeah, I think you're but right. I, I think the sport in itself is really growing. I think more people are looking at it. I think ESPN, when they stream it and put it on their networks, I think it's going to do well. And uh, Good for USC and good for WWE. Friday nights on Fox Sports. I think good all the way around. WWE Smackdown. You know, the, these deals, I think they're win-wins for both sides, and I think that's great. Exit 3. Now we're coming to one of the most bizarre stories. Oh, is this the story? Ah, oh, I am so captivated by this. This was all started with the Ringer, uh, which is a uh, sports reporting site. They do they're almost like a TMZ type who, of thing. Who, who basically did a fantastic job on this? They, they broke st- they it, broke this it, so well researched, well reported, and I, I think it was fantastic what they did. But uh, I'm stepping all over. Go ahead. No, no. Tell, tell I think everybody knows all, all, already about what's going on with Brian Colangelo, the GM of the Sixers, was uh, found out that he was using uh, Twitter burner accounts, basically fake accounts, to defend himself, to, de- to defame other players, to defame former GMs. I think he criticized Embiid, Okafor, Noel. And, <laughs> and, one, and one of the Twitter burner accounts actually disclosed medical information, that's trade crazy. information, that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, know. really, that's privileged information that a team has, and he probably shouldn't be. A player or their agent tells a team in confidence that material, and you know you can't blab it all over the Internet. Well, again, I, I don't have – I honestly, for me, everyone does this. The, uh, the fact that the GM of a professional sports team doing it, or whether it's his wife, which is now the I, new storyline. Yeah, I think that's the new storyline. He He's denying vehemently that he doesn't tweet, he doesn't use these things. He has one Twitter account. I think it's – Philadelphia one two three four five six seven that he uses to Incredibly monitor creative name Twitter. Though. He uses that to get news on the NBA, and I th- he said he reads that one, but these other accounts he doesn't tweet on, he doesn't look at. 
that that's his thing, and I know he's called the um, his players and everyone involved and say he didn't do it. So now the big story is his wife is doing it, or the big theory is his wife is doing it because apparently for Twitter you need a phone number to set these things up, right? Right. And the phone numbers on these burner accounts, they have a 9-1 at the back of them, and apparently Coangelo's wife phone number has a 9-1 at the back of it. So everyone's thinking, you know, it's it's someone very close to Coangelo, and because of the phone number, everyone's kind of looking now at Coangelo's wife. Well, again, it's one of those things where some of this stuff is – you know okay you know if you're making taking jabs or defending yeah, yourself yeah. that's fine when you start defaming somebody when you start disclosing non-public information that hurts the, the team. medical stuff too that hurts the team yeah it actually hurts the league too well and, it hurts the league and, and let me tell you something this is the off season they want to attract big name players they want to get uh agents calling them they want their draft picks you know comfortable coming here and that this really is a black eye for the sixers and let, their whole theory and their whole trademark and their whole you know slogan is trust the process how can you trust the process if your president and uh, general manager is sending out confidential information on you so suspension or job I'm, loss? I'm shocked he's still here. I, you know what? The the biggest I think they're, they're calling the smoking gun is the fact that as, as we said, the Ringer did an excellent job, and and part of that excellent job is they contacted the 76ers to get their take on everything. I think the writer of the um, uh, the thing I, I'll have it in front of me right now. He said he called the Sixers, and within 15 minutes, the uh, burner accounts went private, which basically means you can't see the unless tweets, you, right? unless you're a follower unless you're a follower. So they called the Sixers office. So someone at the Sixers office told someone or did something within 15 minutes who had access to those accounts took them down or basically you know made it impossible for non followers to look at it. So someone close to Colangelo, if it wasn't Colangelo himself did something with these things. Well, the team is taking it seriously. Absolutely. They launched an investigation. Basically, all you have to do is ask an IT person who opened this account, and th they could track that down in a heartbeat. See, I, you have an engineering degree, so I'm, I'm asking you, how, how do they look up these things? Do, do they have to go into a... Uh, the the IT address or IP address or what? I don't, I don't even know it, if I'm it, saying it, right. it all, all depends upon whether or not Twitter's going to cooperate. Because they they actually have really? to they actually have to talk to Twitter. Wow, I about who said who set up the account? Okay, I mean you could you could try and figure out what computer did it. All right, but you can't figure out who did it right off the bat. Interesting. So they may have to go to Twitter and see how cooperative Twitter is. But like I said, league is probably going to take this real serious. The Sixers are taking it seriously, and I think the sports betters now have to take it seriously. Absolutely. Yeah, that's crazy. What, what, kind of inf what kind of information he's uh, giving out? Oh, and, and they're betting on it, right? Bovada. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. Sports betting have to the sports betters have to take seriously with this. Will Colangelo be the Sixers president of basketball operations for the 2018-2019 NBA season? The odds are up on Bo Bovada. Okay. Uh, yes, it has a plus 200 money line, two to one odds. Okay. And. No is a minus 300 money line, one to three odds. No is the favorite. Absolutely. I, I, I'm shocked he still has a job this week. <laughs> well, I, I think it's just a matter of when. Well, look, like I said, it's the off season. You're trying to attract free agents. You're uh, you're talking with agents of potential draft picks. So, you know, you, you want to get this settled. You want to get – and you, look, you got to get Coangela out of there because you got to get a GM in there that could bring in – the new players for next year. I feel bad for his father. Oh, he, one of the, the best legend. best guys the legend. in the NBA in NBA history. He's one of the be he's, he's, you're right, he's a legend. Yep. And he he's got to try and tread this so that he's not throwing his son under the bus and you know, it, he, he really really embarrassed the Colangelo name to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, if it was him. Exit 4. And last but not least, we're going to switch up gears again, going to men's lacrosse in the NCAA. little lacrosse talk. I like it. Congratulations to the Yale Bulldogs. They won their first ever men's lacrosse title in the NCAA. I, I'm shocked. I mean, Yale is, what, 1600s? <laughs> they, were, uh, yep. they were formed, and, uh, and lacrosse is a Native American game, so you know they were playing it on campus back when the college came around, so... 
I can't believe that the, it took them this long to win a championship. But hey, congratulations! Well, this is the first NCAA title. Yep, yep. Their first, their last title was in 1883. Okay, which was before the NCAA uh, was formed. It, it's still shocking that it's that long. H- how about the last Ivy League team to win a cha- uh, win a title in the NCAA lacrosse is Princeton. Okay, 2001, and fourth team in the past decade to win their first ever title. So they're actually getting some parity in the lacrosse leagues now. You know what's impressive? Yale Bulldogs. They, I, I'm not a lacrosse follower, but I know a couple of teams that are big in lacrosse. Johns Hopkins. Johns Hopkins is always there in the uh, NCAA finals. But they beat Duke, who is an outstanding lacrosse. Uh, Multi-title winner. Absolutely. They're outstanding lacrosse uh, players. Beat them 13-11, to 11, so congratulations to the Yale Bulldogs for their first ever title. Sounds good. Well, that'll do it for the uh, ride on the turnpike. Doug, what do you got here for you? Well, uh, just want to let everyone know how to contact the show. Call or text us at 609-512-6510, 609-512-6510. Facebook or Twitter, you can follow us or connect with us there at Turnpike Sports for both of those. Email us at info at turnpikesportsradio.com. Don't forget to order your International Bikini Team calendar. Email info at International Bikini Team. Email at international info at international bikini team dot org. I keep messing up that <laughs> that uh, email address, but uh, that's how you go. Email them, get more information on how to purchase your calendar for this year, and also for for those who want to check out the show on different channels, we have distribution through iTunes. We're on iHeartMedia, and also you can find us on Stitcher Radio. So that's how you can uh, get in touch with us, and also follow the show. Sounds good. Hey, stick around after the commercial break. My favorite portion of the show. Yes, that's right. The Turnpike Sports Police Blotter. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Now you've been hearing me talk about MyPillow and their different promotions, like the four-pack special and the MyPillow mattress. Well, the folks at MyPillow now have a new special offer for all of you. It's called the MyPillow two-pack special. Head over to MyPillow.com and click on the two-pack special link right on the homepage. You can't miss it. And here's the offer. Use our promo code CARDS, C-A-R-D-S, and you'll be able to get two MyPillow premium pillows for one low price plus free shipping. You can choose from standard, queen, and even king-size pillows. Same 10-year warranty, same 60-day money-back guarantee, and they're all made here in the USA. That's the MyPillow 2-Pack Premium Pillow Special. Two pillows, one low price when you use our promo code CARDS at checkout. You'll also get free shipping on your order. That's MyPillow.com or call 800-319-7913 to order by phone and use our promo code CARDS. C-A-R-D-S. Better sleep starts with MyPillow. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. And for your viewing pleasure, six free spicy movies on DVD, plus free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. Again, that's BABE16. Because without it, no free stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. You know, in the uh, studio here, I have my computer in front of me, and I am transfixed on this uh, 76ers Coangelo thing. I'm, I'm loving all these new uh, theories. First, you know, he had the wife is doing it. Now you have the agent doing it. And I, I think this is uh, 
it, it's terrible for a Sixers. Uh, my goodness, what a great soap opera this is. <laughs> it, it's it's taken a life of its own. Oh, and I you love know what? It. Oh, I don't God. think there's going to be an easy resolution to this. No. It, it, well, or a quick one either. Yeah, so. there, there's going to be a quick one. He's going to leave. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Sixers. What about penalties? I think by the end of this week, uh, Coangelo will be gone. I don't think so. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, know. I'm thinking somewhere to. closer That's, to when. Uh, th- you know what? They're not going to do anything during the finals. Yeah, I wonder if the NBA will say something. Hey, don't do not do anything during the finals. Don't take away all that, our uh, thunder and our that's publicity. That's the thing. I don't think they're going to do anything during the finals. Or you, or you may see That's it. a new theory, Nessa. Now, that's your theory. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, going to drag it out. Sports, they're going to drag our, it out. That's uh, new theory. That's Doug's new theory. That, that, that's what I would do. Why would you take away from probably one of the better matchups you're going to see in the NBA? I, everyone expected it, but so what? It takes away from the actual league now mm-hmm. because you have a dumbass – Using burner accounts to do all this. Allegedly, t- allegedly. Well, we, it could be his wife or his agent. Apparently, so for what I'm reading, uh, honestly, if it's an agent or his wife, it's him. Well, you got to attribute it to him because he's got to know. If it's about his wife, stuff. he must be saying something at home that she's just repeating or something or something like that. Like that. But uh, no, that's a, that's a good theory. That's a uh, yeah, and and you know what's sad for the NBA? There are all I haven't taken a poll or I haven't noticed what the other radio shows are doing, like uh, uh, Golik and. What's the new guy? Golik and Wingo. Golik and Wingo. Yeah, I, are, are they talking more about Coangelo, or are they talking about the NBA Finals? <laughs> Equal. Equal. See, that's that's terrible for the NBA. So, hey, but you know, it's great for us and great for you. Is uh, the favorite time of the show when we look at athletes behaving poorly? That's right. The Turnpike Sports Police Blotter. <laughs> And as always, the Turnpike Sports Police Blotter is brought to you by Bean Genius. Over 2,000 specialty blends of coffee available at your fingertips at BeanGenius.com. Have some of the best coffee in the country delivered right to your door each month when you subscribe to Bean Genius. And now get 10% off of your subscription when you sign up at BeanGenius.com using our promo code PIKE at checkout. That's P-I-K-E. Bean Genius, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. And with that... We're going to lead right into, he's he's actually probably sports industry is one, one of the, the best gifts to the sports industry. Former MLB player Lenny Dykstra. Oh, God, that, that guy, jeez. He's charged with allegedly making terrorist, terroristic threats, possession of cocaine, marijuana, and ecstasy. And this all, from reports I'm seeing, sprung from a Uber trip? An Uber trip gone bad. I know. He, well, see, you know what's great? I, I find I, I'm not an Uber user, so I finally found out what the problem was and how you use Uber. Looking at the problem with Lenny Dykstra, apparently you have an app, you you have your or, original point, and you type into the app the place you want to go, and they charge you accordingly to the place you want to go. Right. So and so, what was he Dykstra's want, he, problem? He needed to change his direction. He, he wanted to change the his destination. destination, and the driver refused. Told him he couldn't do it. So supposedly, it, this this got convoluted a little bit too, because initially it was reported that he had a gun. Okay. Now the Uber driver, who by the way drove to the police station, <laughs> he he, awesome. he 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 drove to the parking garage next to the police station. And got out of the car, and that's how the police got to this All thing. Right. He was right next door, so he did change destination. Oh yeah, he, there you for, go. To, to protect himself. <laughs> there you but, go, Lenny. But it was uh, it was it's an uh, undisclosed weapon. It wasn't a gun, so it was something. I don't know what he used to do this, but he threatened the driver, oh, and wow. you know, it just turned into a whole thing. And you know, pulled out a weapon, pointed at the guy's head, and threatened to kill him. According, I, I don't know. According don't, to who? That's according to the driver. Oh, okay. So. Now I don't know. How a terroristic threat. I don't know why that charge is there. I didn't look into it that closely because it was this was just too funny a story. Yeah, he's always doing well, stupid stuff. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Lenny says weird things and does stupid things, and, you know, God knows what he said. So Well, it's undisclosed what he said, it's, other than he's going to kill him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, that's... Uh, and he had all of this crap on him, the uh, dope and... 
things like that? Or he probably didn't even know he had it. Probably. On him. So uh, you know th- that's that's the way Dykstra rolls anyway. So, but moving on, we have a repeat offender for the blotter. Really, a return offender. Wow. Yes. Is that our first one? No, we've had a couple no, Jets do that. <laughs> we have former NBA player Glenn Big Baby Davis arrested again. Wow, okay. Yeah, I, I can't remember what he was arrested for the first time he was on the show, but uh, what did he do this time? Well, what he did the previous time. Let's okay. set the stage. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. The, he, was in, he was in a hotel. And That's right. Yeah. the The manager of the hotel smelled marijuana. Okay. Yeah, I kind of remember. So they this they, they they entered the room with the police trying to evict them, all that stuff, and uh, they found the ledger detailing drug deals and all that other stuff. So they found uh, paperwork. Yeah. Good. He, well, that that's great to know. He's he's good at accounting for himself. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, anyway, this time charged with felony assault with intent to cause great bodily injury. Wow. He tried to hit a guy with his car outside a nightclub. <laughs> Well, that didn't end I, I there. I like a lot of these things happen outside a nightclub. Well, this got even more interesting because after Big Baby tried to run this guy down, the guy confronted Big Baby. So, oh, I I'd be running and I'd still be running from Big Baby. First off, you don't confront uh, what he's he's almost seven feet tall for God's sake. Well, obviously this guy was not up to the task anyway. So Davis picked him up, okay, <laughs> slammed him onto the concrete. Wow. And then he slammed him down face first. Oh, he's got facial fractures. Wow, broken teeth, and he's got broken ribs. So, so, so big baby allegedly tried to hit him with a car. Didn't work. It didn't work. And this guy got injured when big baby got out of the car and allegedly threw him down. So big baby no, caused no, more no. damage outside of his car than in his car. See, I I, I want to say that. The guy didn't need to confront him after that. Oh, absolutely not. So I, I don't know what this guy was. Unless this guy was a big guy, too. It's not described how big this guy is. No. But Big Baby threw him, picked him up and threw him down onto the concrete, broke his teeth, broke his, uh, gave him some facial, facial fractures, broken ribs, all that stuff. He's still in the hospital. And Davis turned himself in, thankfully. Well, is, he, is he still playing basketball? No. He, he can't be. No. no. Okay. Good. No, he, he's done. No. I lost track of him after he left the uh, Celtics. Well, he went. I believe to Los Angeles after that, or something. I don't know about that. But uh, he he played for one or two other teams after that. So, uh, you know, God bless Big Baby for creating news for us. Next up, former NFL player Stanley Wilson the second was arrested. I don't remember this guy at all. No, uh, he had a cup of coffee in the league, basically. Huh. Charged with resisting arrest, interfering with the police officer, three counts of attempted unlawful use of a motor vehicle. Th- this guy was very ambitious here. He alleged- let, me, let me guess what he probably did from the charge. Did he just not pull over when the cops put the lights on? No. Oh, is this something totally different? Because I was thinking uh, no, motor is- vehicle like uh, problems. Well, it, it is a motor vehicle problem because he allegedly tried to steal a vehicle from a Mercedes-Benz dealership. Oh, okay. And the resisting arrest came when the police he came to take him. Well, no, police came to take him into custody. He refused to go. Okay. And during the course of the investigation, this is why I was saying he was very ambitious. Wilson had tried doing the same thing at an Infinity dealership down the road. Huh. At the on the same day. On the, while he's being investigated for one, he they, they found out he, he did it at did a another. dealership down the road. Okay, well he just took the one road and went right down. Yeah, he went from Infinity to Mercedes Benz, so he was thinking so high he, end. So he failed Getting into one of the car- he failed at both things, or he, he failed at both things. Okay, no. and you know this is uh, not the first time he's been arrested. I'll go through the laundry list, and these are very interesting charges. Arrested in February 2018 on charges of unlawful possession of methamphetamine and resisting arrest. So obviously he loves fighting the police. Now these are the interesting ones. June of 2016, the police called him naked when he is ad- attempting to break into a home, and the homeowner shot him. Wow. In the abdomen. Oh. Then, following that one, the nude run in June 2016, in January 2017, another nude break in. He was running around outside. In January? Wait, what, what area of the country is this? Uh, th- <laughs> this is this is in uh, South. Okay, good. I was like, yeah, you know what? You want to run around Jersey or New York in no, January? No, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Portland, Oregon. Oh, that's cold. Yep. They, wow. found, they found him running around naked and high. He obviously outside you know, a high, neighbor's yeah. home. Outside a neighbor's high. home. 
Then, January naked in Portland, Oregon. Yep. And, wow. And then, again in February, same year, they found him naked again. This was naked. Trying to break into a house, a backyard shed, and then asked the neighbor to have sex with him. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. He he obviously has some issues. Really? You yeah, think? I think so. You I'm think? A, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I think he might. He needs some help. You that's play a, you play one on the radio. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a sad cry for help. All right, and now rounding out the blotter for this week, we have University of Georgia tennis player Nathan Ponwith. A tennis player? Tennis player. Is that our first tennis player? Yep. Okay. Details are sketchy because they're still investigating it, but he has been charged with possession of a controlled substance as a, a hallucinogen. Okay. A second degree possession of marijuana, and he was publicly drunk. Oh, okay. Hey. Dismissed from the team. They're still investigating. No comment other than goodbye. You know, that's all. Then we have University of Georgia defensive back Trey Bishop was arrested and charged with felony eavesdropping and surveillance. Really? I've never... That's our first eavesdropping uh, second, charge here. Second. Second eavesdropping, huh? Oh, okay. What, is that one of those things where he put a camera somewhere? He shouldn't have put a camera? He allegedly recorded a sex act involving a woman without her permission. Oh, wow. Okay. He wasn't even involved in the sex act. Wow. And the only way this came about, the woman found out about the video from her friend's as saying that this guy was going around showing people this this video. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. So uh, those were uh, two interesting entries to end the blotter with. So that's it for this week with there. Please visit our sponsor, beinggenius.com. Head on over to their subscription page. You get 10% off your subscription when you use our promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. And that'll do it for the blotter. Yeah, stick around for more Turnpike Sports after this, where we talk about weird minor league team names. I don't know what it is. Promotions. Either, team promotions? promotions. I thought they'd change their names. One of them did for well, the promotion. Well, we'll find out together when we come back on Turnpike Sports. We'll get right back to the show, but I want to take a minute to talk to you about being genius. How would you like your coffee delivered right to your door every month, maybe two times a month? Well, now that can happen with Bean Genius. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country at BeanGenius.com. And Bean Genius actually learns their customers' individual taste preferences, then suggests future coffee blends for them. Well, how do they do that? Well, this is the cool thing about Bean Genius. Over at BeanGenius.com, they use an algorithm which learns the coffee flavors you like and then pairs up what you like with the coffee that they have in stock. And it's all based upon you. Every time you order, the system learns. The system learns your preferences as you go along and order more and more coffee. And now, all our listeners at Turnpike Sports can get a special offer. You head on over to BeanGenius.com slash subscription, and you'll be able to get 10% off your purchase when you use our promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E, at checkout. That's 10% off at BeanGenius.com slash subscription with promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. BeanGenius.com, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. Do you wake up with a sore neck or a bad back? Or maybe you just had an awful night's sleep? Must be the bed, right? Well, maybe it's not your bed. Maybe it's your pillow. That's why I use my pillow. I sleep great at night and wake up pain-free. And now there's a great deal being offered by the folks at MyPillow. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the four-pack special tab, and use promo code CARDS or call 1-800-319-7913 to take advantage of this four-pack special. You'll get 50% off two MyPillow premium pillows and two Go Anywhere pillows. MyPillow.com with promo code CARDS. That's promo code CARDS to take advantage of this four-pack special. Better sleep starts with MyPillow. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. Well, one of the great things about going to a baseball game is the promotions they have. And uh, if you heard me before the commercial break, uh, one of the promotions uh, that a lot of minor league teams are doing now is they're changing their name for one or two nights a month. And uh, 
I think uh, you have our our local baseball team, the minor league uh, Trenton Thunder. Well, look, you want to start off with that one. One of the, one of the things I've always noticed, uh, Major League Baseball is big on their promotions with you know bobblehead dolls, something certain nights, all that stuff. So minor league promotion, minor league baseball is doing the same thing. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of them do throwback uniforms. Uh huh. So you know, let, let's let's shift gears I, here a I little love, bit. I, let me tell you, I love the throwback uniforms. Anytime they do throwbacks in any sport. Well, before I get into it, a lot of teams are doing fauxback uniforms, and I'll talk about this See, that's in a little weird. bit here. I don't get that. But I don't get that at all. Let's start off with with our our hometown team. Hometown team, the Trenton Thunder. Yep. Every Friday, Who, who's a double A uh, minor affiliate, league affiliate minor league of, affiliate of the New York Yankees, right? Every Friday home game from now for the rest of the season, they will change uniforms, change team names, and become the Trenton Pork Roll. Okay. For those of you who don't know about Pork Roll, Pork Roll is something very familiar in New Jersey. Uh, you, um, It's a salted pork product that's been uh, invented in New Jersey in the 1800s, and, uh, you know, you have it for breakfast, you have it for lunch, you have it for dinner. It's the uh, It's an all-purpose meat. All-purpose meat. It's the greatest thing in the world, by the way. Started in 1870 by the sponsor of all this, Cases Pork Roll. Yep. Yep. Uh they even created what's called the Pork Roll Pavilion okay. at Waterfront Park in Trenton. By the way, Cases is still located in Trenton, New Jersey. Washington Street. Washington Street in Trenton, New Jersey. But uh you know, normally I don't like the whole changing of the name things with the teams that everyone's doing nowadays in the minor league, but I kind of like this one because you know it's the home state. And and by the way, I I will get a pork roll hat. Well, they even changed the uh, team logo. Really, yeah, it's a giant pork roll. It's a giant pork roll. Giant okay. pork roll. A well, slice of pork roll, I should say. It's not a. I I may get a shirt and a hat. Well, you know. Okay. Other than that team changing its name, I don't like the whole idea about changing names of things. Well, I, actually, I do. Really, it, it's, it's a little a different thing. And, see, they're they're sucking me in, just like uh, I said. There's, I'm going to buy a hat. I'm going to buy a shirt just because it's uh, it's a local product, and I want to support local products. Well, well, that's one one view. I I think it's something it's it's something good for people to go to. Kids love it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I figured, let me take a look around the league, the minor leagues, okay, and see exactly what's going minor on. Minor leagues are big on this stuff. Well, they got to do something. Yeah, well. you know, they they don't have the the major network coverage and all that other stuff. Their sure. their payrolls are not that big, so they got to do something to bring in uh, crowds. So uh, here here's uh, here's a couple of examples: the Akron Rubber Ducks. Okay, what, what is their actual name though? The Akron Rubber Ducks. Oh, that that's their actual name. Yes, that's See, their actual stick name. With that. <laughs> They're a Rubber Class Double A Eastern League team. Okay. They're going to celebrate 70s night in August, and the team is going to have uniforms with a 70s inspired jersey. You know, like the old uh, Astros kind of looking. Oh, deal. I love the old Astros. Something like there. that. They're going to do a 70s inspired jersey. There, there's a font that everyone uses for the 70s. I don't know what it's called. It should be called 70s font. I think it might be. Okay. <laughs> but. Um, they're doing that. that what are that, their names going to be? It's just still going to be the Akron. They're going to be named the Rubber Ducks? Yeah. Okay. Some are changing their names, some are not. Okay. Now we have the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Okay. That's an actual name. That's the name, I know. Class AA Southern League. Okay. They're going to host a 90s night on May 31st. 90s night, really? Yes. They're going to wear a 90s style faux back jersey and cap with the, with the jerseys auctioned off after the game. 90s jerseys? They weren't in much- existence. They weren't in existence. Yeah, but they would look the same as today's jerseys, weren't they? Nineties is that they're just, far away. It's just one of those things where they're they're trying to get people in. It's it's a faux back. Remember, it's not a throwback. A faux back. So That's stupid. Now we got the Round Rock Express, which is the Triple A minor league team of the Texas Rangers. Round Rock Express. Yep. Okay. I'm assuming they have a train as their. Uh, or a Pony Express kind of stuff? Yes. It's a Pony Express thing? Yep. Okay. okay. They're going to be wearing powder blue uniforms, which is an homage to the Texas Rangers uniforms of the 70s. That, well, that seems right. I mean, They're going to do that every so often throughout the year. They're going to pick certain home games in their, in their remaining okay. schedule. Moving on to the Rochester Red Wings. Okay. Class AAA. All right. Uh, they are going to rename themselves... The Rochester Hop Bitters for one night this year. Hot bitter? Hop, hop. Like hop beer. Like bitter. beer. Is like it because of beer? Well, the Hop Bitters were a team that played in 1879 and 1880. See, that's cool. I like that. See, I I, I don't I like the throwbacks and paying, you know, 
tribute to history. But the faux backs that you know teams that never were around. I like. Well, I like no, that, this team though. was around. I well, that's what I mean. I don't. I don't like the other things they're doing. I like what they're doing. Well, their logo is going to have a Stein on, on okay. their a, a, a bubbling over Stein on their shoulder. Okay. They're they're going to do it as if the team existed today. They're going to do a modern version of what their jerseys would look like. You know, I might get a hat for that one. Yeah, the, <laughs> the beer thing. I it, like it, that. It's a beer Stein with uh, the hops uh, around it, the, the leaves or whatever they are. So they're going to be doing they that. They have to have beer specials that night at this Oh, stadium. I would assume it, so. It must I have to be. So. have to be. Now, here you have the William Wil- Wilmington Blue Rocks. They're a high A team in the Carolina League. Uh-huh. They're, going to, they're going to do their own fullback jerseys. So this is a team that's never been in existence before. No. This is a team that it, this is their team. This is a rejected uniform design. Oh, I like that. A rejected one. Yeah. Nice. It was proposed for the mid-90s, and it's a, a royal blue jersey, top royal blue, and yellow caps. Wow. That, that's an interesting I way I like of doing that. It. Rejected jersey nighter. I like that's that. That's actually what they should call it. That's pretty cool. Now we're going to have the Montgomery Biscuits. Okay. They're, they're a Class AA Southern League team. They're going to be celebrating Forrest Gump night. Okay. <laughs> they're they're going to have uniforms for the Greenbow Biscuits. Greenbow was the t- town Forrest Gump was from. Okay, all right. So they're they're going to actually, and there's going to be a fifty style uniform. It's going to say Greenbow on it. Oh, all right. So uh, Greenbow, Alabama, is the home of Forrest. And l- Gump. let's be honest, this is all to sell additional jerseys and additional hats and things like that. Right? Oh yeah, this is this is revenue. This is, this is not anything else. Yeah. But uh, and finally, I'm going back to the major leagues. Because this is just a really odd promotion. I don't know who called for this or who thought this was a good idea. The New York Mets are having a bobblehead giveaway of Noah Syndergaard. Okay. It's real hair. On on the doll? On is the doll. Real hair? Real is hair. it real long, flowing, I, blonde locks? I, I'm, try, I'm trying to find out if it's, if it's Syndergaard's hair. Oh, my God. And it comes with a brush. When you say real hair, you mean like... It's human hair. They said human hair. They said real human hair. Oh, now wow. that, it could just be an extension. You know the hair extensions people wow. have. It could be one of those things. But I thought that was the oddest promotion of all of these. Oh, so weird. God bless the Mets. They're trying something different. I don't think it's a good move, oh. but it's the Mets, so they got to do something. Their season's pretty much all over anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> They're mathematically every, limited every from the year playoffs. I picked them to go so far because of their starting pitching, and every year someone gets hurt, and then another person gets hurt, and so on and so on. But hey, it's the Mets. Yep, that's it. So uh, we're done with the promotion uh, scope here. Uh, you know what? I like I said, I I I would get the pork roll memorabilia, and I would get the the Rochester hop, whatever they're called, the beer memorabilia. The hop bitters. Ho- hop bitters. Okay. You know, well, hey, some, uh, see, I think uh, I, I wasn't planning on getting hooked into this, but, you know, I, I kind of like it now. I might go uh, check their websites, whatever they are. So I think that'll do it for us this week on Turnpike. Enjoy the NHL Finals. Uh, NBA I, I, Finals. I keep calling it the NHL Finals. Stanley, Stanley, Cup Stanley Cup Finals. Stanley Cup Finals. Stanley Cup Finals. Enjoy the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, the NBA Finals. And uh, and the Spelling Bee. Uh, the Spelling Bee, yes, absolutely. The, the Is it the Finals of the Spelling it's Bee? It's the Finals of the Spelling Bee. And by this time next week, hopefully we'll get some really great stuff on Coangelo and the 76ers. Uh, that's got to happen sometime soon something either he's gone or you fingers find crossed. Out who, who, or, or something or place find your, out who actually did it place your bets on bovada yeah go to bovada you can actually make some money on this uh so well that'll do it for us see you next time on the turnpike mm-hmm.